But is math real? Of course not. You fool. I don't believe that math is real. That's part of my religious beliefs. I say religious because it's stuff that cannot be proven, and that's part of why I don't think it's real. Logic is not real, so therefore math isn't real, and logic isn't real. We know this because logically we have the incompleteness theorem, and if we have the incompleteness theorem, the logic is incomplete and cannot be proven, then by kind of tautology, logic isn't real, because if it were real, then it would be logically provable. And since we made it up, it seems like it should be able to prove itself, but it can't. And we live in this very complex universe that none of our models can accurately predict at all scales, but they can predict well enough at simple scales. So we've got the double pendulum problem, which if you're not familiar with it, is essentially there is no way to reproduce the swinging of a double pendulum. With a pendulum, you can get extremely high accuracy and say, if I pull back a pendulum this amount, I can expect that 500 iterations from now that it will be at this point. You know, so let's say that it's perfectly lubed and perfectly preserves energy as, as much as it can. The pendulum's going to swing back and forth and back and forth, and it's always going to lose a little bit of momentum. But you can very easily predict if I pull it back exactly to this amount, then every single time that I pull it back this amount and let it go, after so many swings, after 10 swings, it's always going to come back to here. And this is perfectly predictable. The double pendulum is if you have a pendulum on a pendulum, you can never predict more than basically one to two swings in advance. You can get that far and then you cannot know where either pendulum, so you have a pendulum and then you have a pendulum attached to the pendulum and I think typically the pendulum on the bottom can even go around. Yeah, but after basically you just have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to be completely random. And I think this is a perfect illustration of how math isn't real because if it were real, then we would be able to perfectly predict situations in the real world, but we can't. It's just a close approximation. You know, you can tell about how far a baseball is going to go. You can get a rocket ship to the moon. You can sometimes tell where energy in an atom is if you ask it nicely. So that's the whole discussion of, is math discovered or invented? And I say, well, obviously it's invented because it's made up. But within our lines of reasoning that we have and that we create, uh, we create them fairly consistently and it's good enough for us to be able to operate on and the machines that we create can work within our approximations and are approximate enough themselves that they can produce good enough results. I mean, even the whole concept of one and zero is absurd because you're really working with tolerances. There is no such thing as a one state in a computer or a zero state in a computer. You're taking a clock cycle, which has its own variances in it, and you're saying, well, relative to this signal that is more or less uh, this precision with this amount of time, which again, you know, the approximation's certainly close enough for dealing with billions of a second, but maybe not close enough for dealing with trillions of a second, right? Um, or, uh, you know, at some point it starts to break down and just looks like random noise, but at some crude point it can look cyclic and look predictable. Anyway, so you've got that clock signal, and the only way that we can tell that something is a one or a zero is based on this clock signal that we say, well, whatever variance is in the clock signal, we just accept that, and the clock signal is truth despite potential minor variances in it. And then we basically have these ranges that are really, really far apart from each other. So we say, well, one is all the way up here at 3.3 volts and zero is all the way down here at 0.1 volts and anything in between really it could be anything but if it's at least say three volts we know it's a one and if it's and if it's at most 
0.5 volts, we know it's a zero. But if it's something in between, we really don't know what it is, so it's just a absolute guess, and that's why we have error correction bits and stuff like that, is because when the clock is, the clock signal is somehow, I mean, it should never be out of sync with the other signal, but I mean, this is the whole point of a clock is that things can get out of sync, and so we, we clock them and we say whatever it is at the point that the electrical signal is high, or, or I mean, whatever it is at the point that the clock signal is high, we just, we just accept the value that's on the line at that time. And if it's not within the tolerances of it's above three volts or it's below 0.5 volts, then literally you just get a random value. You have no idea what it's going to be. Um, so our computers are very inexact, but again, we define such huge coarse uh, tolerance for error that the complete randomness that it is actually happening is dwarfed by the strength of the signal that we cause it to send. Yeah, hopefully that's entertaining or enlightening. So Josh, uh, let's clip that bit. Is math real? Of course not, you fool. <laughs>